Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, bringing you some of the best college football news, predictions, and analysis. And as you start watching this video, make sure to hit that like button. Go follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Gridiron Expert. And of course, go check out our official website, thegridironexpert.com, where you can sign up for our weekly newsletter. And of course, sign up for our expert picks, where for just $30, you will receive every single one of our 2019 college football spread picks, including the postseason. And we have had an amazing start to the 2019 season, so do not miss out on the extra content and that great opportunity to make some extra money yourself over at thegridironexpert.com where you can sign up for everything there. And the description has all the links for that as well. Well, week two was an exciting week of college football. We said that week two had the potential to be even better than week one, and it certainly lived up to the hype. As six teams in the top 25 fell, and we saw two thrilling ranked versus ranked matchups. But week three, unfortunately, will not bring that much excitement compared to week two and week one. For the first time since October 14th, 2017, we will not have a single ranked versus ranked matchup in college football. It's an unbelievable statistic and unbelievable that it happened this way. But regardless, we still were able to find five games that we think will be the best of week three. And of course, even though that there aren't any rank versus rank matchups, you will see your fair share of upsets, some of which we have up on the board right now. And we're going to go ahead and kick things off with a big Friday night game while number 20 Washington State travels to Houston to take on the Cougars. And of course, this game will be played at NRG Stadium. So it's not officially a home game for Houston, but they will certainly have somewhat of a home field advantage being played right in their backyard. Now for Washington State, the battle of the Cougars, the Washington State Cougars and the Houston Cougars. But for Washington State, we thought back in the preseason it would be Gage Gabru that would be the quarterback for Mike Leach and his squad. But it actually ended up being Anthony Gordon. And of course, he has not disappointed in Mike Leach's offense. We have seen what Mike Leach has done with quarterbacks, both at his time at Texas Tech and now during his time in Pullman. And Anthony Gordon, just through two games, has already thrown for 884 yards and nine touchdowns. This Washington State offense is averaging 58.5 points per game and over 600 yards per game. So this Cougars team is absolutely a Pac-12 title contender once again under Mike Leach. And if they take care of Houston and take care of UCLA, we could be seeing a top 15 matchup between Washington State and Utah in week five. But they first do have to get past Houston. And they are not going to be an easy test for Washington State. The Cougars, yes, lost to Oklahoma in week one, 49 to 31. But De'Eric King, one of the better quarterbacks in the group of five, and maybe even in the entire nation, had over 270 yards of offense alone and three touchdowns against that Sooners defense. The problem for Houston in this game is going to be their defense. Will they be able to shut down Anthony Gordon and this Washington State offense? They've allowed 33 points per game. I know a lot of that is skewed from that Oklahoma game. But they also allowed 17 points to Prairie View A&M, who they only beat by 20 points. This game expected to be a shootout between the two Cougar squads. But I like Mike Leach to come on the road and take care of business and should be undefeated entering that huge Pac-12 matchup against Utah in Week 5. Our second game we have up on the board is number 2 Alabama traveling to South Carolina. The first time these two teams have met since 2010 when, of course, the Steve Spurrier-led Gamecocks took down Nick Saban in the Crimson Tide 35-21 to at williams Bryce Stadium. But, of course, a lot has changed in nine years. Players have come and gone. Steve Spurrier, of course, is gone. Will Muschamp is now leading the squad for the Gamecocks. And we'll start with Alabama here, who, of course, has one of the best quarterbacks in the entire nation, and Tua Tungabailoa, who has already thrown for 563 yards and seven touchdowns in just two games. Now, of course, those two games have not been that impressive for Alabama in terms of their quality of opponent. They annihilated Duke in Week 1 and took very easy care of New Mexico State in Week 2. So you can say that this is probably the first legit test for Nick Saban in the Tide, a road SEC game early in the year in what will be a very hostile environment for the Crimson Tide, despite the poor start from South Carolina after losing to North Carolina in week one and now losing Jake Bentley for the season. This will still be a very hostile crowd, a very lively crowd, and obviously a tough place to play for any team. The problem for South Carolina is that going up against another strong 
Alabama defense. A defense that has allowed just 13 total points between Duke and New Mexico State. Of course, not that impressive, but still, anytime you can hold teams at that low of points, it is, I think, an impressive feat. They've allowed just 129 passing yards per game and 104 rushing yards per game. And will that bode well for the true freshman quarterback and Ryan Helensky, who got his first career start last week against Charleston Southern, a 72-10 win for South Carolina? He threw for two, over 280 yards and two touchdowns in his first career start. And the Gamecocks are once again going to need that type of offense performance from their brand new quarterback if they want to have any chance of upsetting the Crimson Tide, much like they did back in 2010. The football power index is giving South Carolina a 13.8% chance to win this game. And that took me by surprise. I think that is rather high. Helensky has a lot of potential, and he is the man for the Gamecocks this season now that Bentley is out for the entire season. Expecting to put up some decent numbers once again, but Alabama should cruise to a victory this time against South Carolina. Once again, their first time they've met since 2010. Our third game up on the board is one that I'm really excited about. A bit of a revenge game for some. Arizona State traveling to face off against number 18, Michigan State. And of course, last year, Herm Edwards got his signature win with the Sun Devils, upsetting Michigan State out in the desert 16-13. to So for some, a very boring game, but if you like defense, it was a dominant defensive performance from both teams. Arizona State, of course, kicking a game-winning field goal as time expired to clinch that victory over the Spartans. This year, though, a lot of talent has changed. A lot of people have come and gone once again for the Sun Devils. They are now led by a true freshman quarterback in Jaden Daniels. And we had concerns with Daniels at the beginning of the season. We didn't really know what to expect in Herm Edwards' second year. But Daniels has lived up to the hype. He's lived up to expectations. He's answered the call. In two games, he has thrown for 588 yards and three touchdowns for this Arizona State football team. And, of course, that takes the load off of one of the best running backs in the Pac-12 and maybe even the nation in Eno Benjamin, who is certainly going to be the key in this game against Michigan State. He's only averaged 3.7 yards per carry so far in 2019, but he's also a dangerous threat in the passing game. As we saw in Arizona State's narrow victory over Sacramento State uh, last week, where they only beat them 19-7, scoring their first touchdown from Benjamin with 4 minutes and 42 seconds left in the game. Michigan State's defense, though, especially against the rush, is going to be difficult for any team. Michigan State is allowing an average of negative three rushing yards per game through two games this season. Of course, like we mentioned with the Houston stats, that is a little bit skewed because in the season opening win over Tulsa, Michigan State held Tulsa to negative 73 rushing yards. I mean, stats are stats. You can't deny the numbers. But, of course, we'll see if Michigan State can keep that up over the course of the season and keep that up against a talented running back, Eno Benjamin. But I do not expect Arizona State to have that much success on the ground, and I do not expect this game to be that high scoring. We criticized Michigan State's offense last year, how disappointing they were, and they have already shown signs of improvement this season, especially with quarterback Brian Lewerke, who has already thrown for over 500 yards and four touchdowns. The Spartans are averaging 39.5 points per game in their two games against Tulsa and then Western Michigan. Can they get the offense going again against a quality opponent, Power 5 opponent, out of the Pac-12? I expect this game to be low scoring, but with this game being at Michigan State and, of course, them being led by Mark D'Antonio, a guy you can never, ever underestimate, I think the Spartans get a bounce-back revenge win over the Sun Devils and improve to 3-0 on the season. Our fourth game we have up here on the list is by far the biggest game of week three. I mean, maybe to some, maybe not to others, but College Game Day certainly thought so. College Game Day will be going to Ames, Iowa for the first time in history. They are going to Iowa State for the big Iowa versus Iowa State rivalry game. So a very thrilling matchup here, one that has major implications for both teams. Of course, it is a non-conference game. But rivalry games, of course, you throw records out the window. They matter regardless of how good or how bad a team is. And this one can certainly set the tone for each team's season. The season is still extremely young. This is only the second game for Iowa State, the third, of course, for Iowa. The Hawkeyes have won four straight over their in-state rivals. They've won those four straight games by an average of 16.5 points per game. So it hasn't really been necessarily close. But it should be mentioned that the last time that the Hawkeyes came to Ames, they only won 44-41 to 41 in overtime. So the Cyclones are nearly snapping that losing streak two years ago to the Hawkeyes as we're unable to get the job done. 
This will feature a game of two great quarterbacks. Iowa's Nate Stanley, who threw for, has thrown for nearly 500 yards and six touchdowns so far this season, including another dominant performance in their 30 to nothing shutout over Rutgers last week. And Iowa State, of course, has a young gun in Brock Purdy, who is already looking very poised as a quarterback with the Cyclones. He kind of rushed onto the scene last year as a true freshman and now has taken the foot reins as full-time starter as a sophomore. Iowa State looked shaky in their season opening win over Northern Iowa, of course taking the uh, Northern Iowa to three overtimes, winning that game 29-26. to A lot of them concerned there. But as we've said before, over and over and over again, teams in week one usually do struggle. Usually they see major improvement from week one to week two. For Iowa State, they're going to see major improvement from week one to week three. They're coming off a of bye week coming in to this game, and I think that's going to extremely benefit the Cyclones going up against their in-state rival. Not only are they coming off a of bye week, college game day is there. I believe Ames to be one of the more difficult places to play, not just in the Big 12, but also in the entire nation. And I think the Cyclones snapped their four-game losing streak to the Hawkeyes in a narrow victory. This game reminds me a lot of what happened last year when Game day went to Pullman, Washington for Washington State and Oregon. The first time they had ever visited Pullman, and the Cougars showed up, showed out, and annihilated the Ducks. I don't think Iowa State annihilates, annihilates Iowa, but I do think they get the win. And our final game that we have up on the board is where game day was more than likely going to go had Syracuse not laid an egg against Maryland. The Orange fell to the Terrapin 63-20 in Week 2. An embarrassing performance, both offensively and defensively, for Dino Babers and his squad. Had they defeated the Terrapins, I wholeheartedly believe that we would be seeing a top 20 showdown at the Carrier Dome, and college game day would be right there. But Ames certainly deserves it in Week 3. The FPI is only giving Syracuse a 3.4% chance to win this game, and Tommy DeVito is a guy that I was so high on going into 2019, but has majorly disappointed me thus far this season. He's already only thrown for three touchdowns and three interceptions. And the running game looked great against Liberty. Didn't really show up much against Maryland. The Orange allowed 354 rushing yards and over 650 total yards to the Terrapins last week. And that's not going to bode well going up against a Clemson offense that has Trevor Lawrence, who has already thrown for 436 yards and two touchdowns. And they're also facing a guy in Travis Etienne who has averaged 9.2 yards per carry this season. This defense for Syracuse has to step up majorly at the Carrier Dome if they want to have any chance of upsetting Clemson. And of course, we know that is possible because of the recent meetings between the Tigers and the Orange. Syracuse probably should have won last year, falling at Death Valley 27-23, a game that they led basically all the way till the end of the fourth quarter. In 2017, at the Carrier Dome, Syracuse actually did upset the Tigers. Yes, their quarterback got hurt, but regardless, they still pulled off that win 27 -23. 24. And back in 2014 and 2015, the Orange only lost to the Tigers by 10 points each time. So Syracuse has been able to hang with Clemson the past few years. Can they do it again on Saturday? Expect this game to be closer about the first half. The crowd will be energized. Hopes will be high. Hopefully Syracuse will bounce back, but Clemson will pull away in the second half and kind of end any hopes of a Syracuse major upset and put a damper on Syracuse's season, sitting there at 1-2, and two, kind of a disappointing start after winning 10 games back in 2018. So there you have it. Our top five games going into week three. No ranked versus ranked matchups, but still plenty of quality football to go around. Games that will have college football playoff implications, rivalry games, and games that could determine whether a team goes bowling or doesn't by the end of this season. Major games going on this uh, this week. You're not going to want to miss any of it. And of course, you're not going to want to miss any of the content and coverage that we have here at the Gridiron Expert. So guys, thank you for watching us here on YouTube. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. Go check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Gridiron Expert. And of course, our official website, thegridironexpert.com, where you can sign up for the weekly newsletter and sign up for our expert picks that will give you every single one of our 2019 college football spread picks for just $30. I promise you, you do not want to miss out on that, and you do not want to miss out on these week three spread picks. So guys, once again, thank you for watching. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time on The Gridiron Expert. Oh,